All right, guys. So um, we're going to recap the mayor race, the Chicago mayor race we um, covered a few weeks ago. Paul Vallis led the candidates with the with the 32.9 percent of votes. Brandon Johnson came in second, 21.6 percent. Lori Lightfoot, the incumbent mayor, came in third with 16.8. And Congressman Garcia came in fourth with 13.7. Evan, what are your um, initial thoughts of these results? Yeah, I mean, the voters were heard. We've heard Lightfoot has been, you know, even from Democrats, very historically unpopular. You heard it right there. She got 16% uh, in in an incumbent primary. That is pretty, yes, it was a crowded field. We got to be fair about that. But that's, that's pretty insane. So you see the numbers. This was about a repudiation of law and order. This was we want to feel safe. Like, yes, you could say it's other stuff. It's with the schools always shutting down. It's with COVID. How she manage that? No, this was about law and order. You've seen it with cities all across the country. You've seen it in New York with uh, getting Eric Adams elected. He said he would run on law and order. This was what this was about. She finished in third. Uh, she conceded the night of. Uh, so we are moving on. And uh yeah, I, I have more to say about uh, the run-up, but I'll hand it over to Thomas first. Well, uh, you have said it pretty well. Um, you know, an incumbent mayor lost her re-election. This is the first time that's happened in 40 years in the city of Chicago. Her popularity was eroded due to COVID and the crime spike in the city of Chicago and just a bunch more other things that, you know, And Lightfoot did not run a good campaign. She, you know, she tried to claim racism or sexism or whatever. She's just said after that she hurt, she lost. And it was really just because she ran a bad campaign and her popularity was in the toilet. And this is just, it's the crime issue is just surging in America. You know, like you said, in New York, Eric Adams, who is more of the law and order candidate and San Francisco, they recalled their district attorney for being woke. And it's been happening everywhere. Even in Seattle, they elected a Republican attorney prosecutor. So it's crime is an issue that, you know, people like Lightfoot did not acknowledge and she kind of blew it off. And now she's paying the price for it for not. And she will know she'll be out of office coming in May. So what are your guys' expectations or predictions for the one-off? Yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit. They just held a debate. Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, yesterday or two days ago? Um, for... um, I'm not entirely sure. I They but... just held – I think it was yesterday. So okay. I, I watched a little bit of it, not too much. I watched – and I thought Brandon Johnson – got everything done he wanted to accomplish. He was on the attack, mainly because in a recent poll, we'll put this up, uh, he was down 43% uh, to 32%. So pretty close race, margin of error. Uh, But he is definitely down. He's down by double digits. So he's got to make some moves. In that debate, he was aggressive. Uh, Vallis did attack, but he only had one attack. I thought it fell flat. He talked about how, uh, you know, Johnson kept schools closed in the poorest um, cities and, um, you know, the poorest, the poorest areas of the cities, excuse me. And you could definitely make that argument, but he didn't really follow it up. He kind of followed it up. And then Johnson responded back really quick that, oh, well, actually it was COVID that shut it down. It was a 100, um, every 100 year pandemic that shut it down. And then Johnson kind of stayed away, or excuse me, Vallis kind of stayed away from it. So I thought Johnson was on the attack. He framed Vallis as a Republican. He highlighted his. Would not be true. Yes, and we will get to that. I, I I think that's a bad attack. We'll get to that in a little bit. I think um, and he also hi- highlighted his uh, ties to the Chicago Teachers Union. He he hit him hard. He hit him hard. He said when Barack Obama was elected in two thousand eight, he switched to a Republican. We'll see about that. I think the strategies each campaign should do. I think. Johnson should stick with the school board because nobody likes corruption, especially, you know, Illinois knows a lot about, um, you know, some politicians having ties to stuff they shouldn't. Uh, he's, he should hit stick with the school board, stick with the message, stick with he, both candidates have been semi pro law enforcement so far. And that's I mean, that's a low bar to climb because Lightfoot, you know, obviously that's why she lost. So you got you got to support that. So he's he's doing all the right things. 
It's just a matter of I would stay away from the Republican thing because that's it's not a losing issue because obviously Chicago is a very Democratic city. But at the same time, it's a Republican at one point. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's kind of a pointless issue, though. Like they're focused on his policies. They're not focused on what he did back in 2008. Uh, and I think Vallis is just, he's kind of more of the establishment candidate. He's got a nice lead. I think he's coasting. I think he feels confident. So we'll see what happens in the next poll. I thought Johnson had a pretty good debate. He attacked him hard. Uh, but is it enough or have people already decided? We'll have to see. All right. So I, I analyzed that poll. Um, so pretty much if anyone hasn't read the poll yet, they say the Lightfoot voters are more even on Vallis or Johnson. Uh, Vallis is winning over the Willie Wilson voters, who he placed fifth in the uh, election, and he just endorsed them. So, so that's probably a good win for him. He's doing pretty evenly well with the other voters as well. And it's time you got to draw the map here and draw the voting where it came from. And there were some areas where Hispanic support for Johnson is not that good. And that's an issue because, you know, Garcia had the Hispanic support in all these uh, wards and precincts where the Hispanic population was, Garcia was doing really well in. Is it because, was it because of his policies or was it because he was Hispanic? I'm not going to say anything because that's up to you. But um, it's pretty much on how can they win over those voters. And if, Gar- Vail- if Vales gets his base that turned out for him in February to turn out in the uh, runoff, He's already there, and it's he's over. got the yeah. half of the um, Lightfoot voters, uh, and he's got at least a majority oh. of the Willie Wilson voters. He he's just already... can't. He just can't get killed in the Lightfoot voters. Right. If it's even, he wins. I agree. Oh yeah. yeah. He just as long as he keeps it even with every single um, in win the Willie Wilson voters, I think he will be in good shape. Um, it's probably gonna be a close race either way. I don't see this being a blowout like it was in 2019. I see. Yeah. So we going. we didn't really cover Willie Wilson a lot. He was the fifth place candidate. I think we mentioned that at the beginning. Could you explain to a little more to our viewers? I guess like you know what he was about. Or okay, so pretty much he is viewed as a per now candidate in the state of Illinois. He ran for mayor a couple of times. He ran for senate. He ran for president. He has his own party called the Willie Wilson party. Um, uh, He's really more viewed as a conservative option, although he leans Democratic. Like he voted for Trump in 2016, but didn't in 2020. Interesting. He is really he's tough on the crime issue because his son was killed by a gang. uh, I think someone from the uh, gang. I'm not sure about that. I I but he endorsed uh, Vallis because of the crime and the education. So, and obviously if that's a 10% block of Willie Wilson voters and Johnson, I mean, Vallis is winning them. He's already in the forties. And if he's half in the life of voters, he's, he help he's almost got it. I think he, Vallis, if he doesn't screw up for the next month and he doesn't sit in his basement, not campaign, I think he, it's his race to lose. No, he's he's done. He's been a good campaigner. He's been on the trail. He's saying we're going to take our city back. Obviously, Lifewood didn't like that comment, but it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, you know, but he's been a he's been a he hasn't been a basement candidate. He's been a strong campaigner. Johnson is going to hit him relentlessly. Vallis even right. mentioned this in the post interview. He's like, listen, this is just what jo- Johnson's going to do. Uh, but I agree. I was curious how the Lifewood was going to split. Uh, I was curious. And if it's half and half, it's over. Uh, I had one more question. Is Biden going to interject in this primary? Do you think? Probably not. No, I don't think, but he was, cause he interjected in the New York one. That was a huge one. He interjected in the Los Angeles one. It seems like he's not going to though. Um, uh, I mean, I feel like in LA, I feel like more people were concerned about Caruso being, because he literally changed his registration the year before he ran for mayor. Yeah. And by, if you look at Vallis's registration, he never registered as a Republican. So he can't. Right. Prove- oh, yeah. That's important because I forgot to mention that with the Republican, he's hitting him as a Republican. Well, he right. was a school board member. He's not a politician. So he's a, he can be a free thinker. He claims he was a Democrat all his life. I think we should believe him. You know, I think it's a losing issue to try to paint him as a Republican because number mm-hmm. one, he's not. But number two, even if he was 15 years ago, what does that have to do with his policy today? You know, right. You know, um, it's like, like you said, why didn't they hit Eric Adams for being a Republican during the Rudy Giuliani era? 
he was a Republican for like two years, but still, like people are gonna like that's by their logic, you know. Why don't you? Yeah. Because Eric Adams, he's far from a conservative, but he he's like, if you be like as a Republican, you're gonna be him less liberal as the other options were back in New York City. 